I've always been curious about how bees make honey. Plus, bees make more than just honey, and I wanted to know about the other five things they create that most people don't even know about, like bee venom and royal jelly. So I took a journey to the bee farm down in Ohio to discover how honey really travels from the hive straight to our table. So you can sample all of them? Yeah. Let's do them all. Incredible. Wow. Whoa. Mmm. Very subtle ginger taste. Whoa. Uh-oh. Oh my god. Okay, ready to go. <laughs> That's it. You should bring that over to Canada. We come to town. Well, welcome to the buzzing world of bees. They slow down. Bees live in special homes in what we know as beehives, where they collect nectar from flowers. Now, when a bee finds nectar, it slurps it up using its long tongue, kind of like how we drink juice with a straw, and then they zip around from flower to flower, slurping up the nectar like tiny superheroes on a mission. After the bee slurps up the nectar, See the bees there? it stores it in a special part of its body called the honey stomach. And when the bee flies back to the hive, it shares this nectar with other bees by regurgitating it. That means throwing it up a little bit. Yuck. I know. But that's how they make honey. Once the bees have regurgitated the nectar into the hive, they get to work to turn that nectar into honey. Flowers are called Queen Anne's Lake, and they pollinate those for its nectar plant. So we're gonna take that smokers and we're gonna smoke their entrance, okay? They flap their wings like crazy to dry out the nectar so it becomes thick and gooey. And this gooey stuff is what turns into sweet, sticky honey that we all know and love. Put a little bit of smoke right here. See how the bees react? We're gonna smoke that hole right there. Then we're gonna give them a little smoke around the bed. The bees then seal it up in honeycomb cells using beeswax, which they also make from special glands in their bodies. And now, here is where the beekeepers come in. They're kind of like the guardians of bees, making sure that they're happy and healthy. You hear them? taking care of them to ensure they have enough space, food, and basically everything that they need. All right, now, I want you to stand on this side. We don't want to stand in their flight path. See how they're going in? We don't want to stand in their way because they're working. If we're standing in their way, they'll wait for us to get out. They'll fly around and they'll wait for you to move out the way so they can get back to work. These are mostly female we're looking at here. Healthy Hive has 95% female workers and 5% male. Male bees have no defense mechanism. They cannot defend themselves. They have no stings. When it comes time to collecting the honey, the beekeeper carefully removes the honeycomb from the hive, and then they use a special tool to scrape off the wax caps that seal the honey inside of the cells. And these are all worker bees here. They're guarding the entrance. Those are guard bees. They don't want to let any intruders in. Talking about yellow jackets, Asian hornets. They're going to take the lid off and you always move slowly, right? Once those caps are removed, it's extraction time. The beekeeper puts the frames in a special machine called an extractor. And this machine spins the frames really fast, causing the honey to flow out like magic. The honey flies out of the cells and drips down to the bottom of the extractor, and the beekeeper collects the honey and filters it to remove any leftover bits of wax or bee parts. And there you have it. Fresh, pure honey, ready to be bottled up and sent to stores right near you. Take this jar out. This is a feeding jar. If I wanted to feed them honey or sugar water, I could put it in this jar. But bees produce more than just honey, which a lot of people don't know about. They also produce five other substances that are incredible. I need to tell you about them. First comes bee pollen. It's a nutritious mixture of pollen, nectar, and saliva collected from the flowers so that that can be turned into honey. Next, they produce something called bee pollen. My personal favorite, which is often also referred to as bee glue. That's a sticky resinous substance that the bees collect from tree buds, sap flows, and other botanical sources, and they use it within the hive as a sealant. They fill the cracks and the gaps in the hive structure, and they coat the interior walls, which helps protect the hive from external threats like bacteria, fungi, and parasites. You see this glue stuff here? That's propolis. It's what? It's called propolis. It's a set that bees get from trees and flowers. It's antibacterial and okay. microbial. It kills microbes in the hive and also kills bacteria. So the interior of a beehive is a sterile environment. What I love about it is it's got amazing antimicrobial, antifungal, and anti-inflammatory properties. So it's used a lot by humans for the immune support that it provides. It's even said that propolis helps to heal wounds and even oral health. I personally take drops of propolis whenever I'm feeling sick and it works wonders. I highly recommend it. You see the honey on the top? But then comes the bee wax. 
The beeswax is just a substance secreted by glands on their abdomens and their bellies. It's used to construct honeycomb cells for storing the honey, also storing pollen, and the little larvae for the bees to be able to grow into their cute little selves. They also produce royal jelly, which is a milky white gelatinous substance rich in proteins, vitamins, minerals, and amino acids, and that gets fed to queen bees and developing larvae, and it's rich in nutrients and believed to have health benefits. The last thing that they produce is bee venom, which I thought was so cool. It's a mixture of proteins and peptides produced by bees, primarily female worker bees, and it serves as a defense weapon against predators, and it also has therapeutic uses in alternative medicine. But the process of a bee's development from an egg to an adult bee involves several stages, four to be exact. First it's the egg, then it's the larvae, then it's the pupa, and then the adult bee emerges. It begins when the queen bee lays an egg in a honeycomb cell wall. That egg is so tiny, it resembles a small tiny grain of rice, and after a few days, that egg hatches into a larva. And at this stage, the larva is fed a diet of royal jelly by the worker bees, and then the larva spins a cocoon around itself and undergoes metamorphosis inside of the cell. And during this stage, the larva transforms into a pupa, which resembles a small white structure, kind of like a little butterfly chrysalis. And after about two weeks, the fully developed adult bee emerges from the cocoon and the new bee chews its way out of the wax cell cap, joining the colony as a fully grown worker bee drone, or in some cases, a new queen bee. And you might be wondering, well, how does a bee become a queen bee? First, the original queen lays the egg, then they have an extended larval stage, a cell sealing stage, a pupil development stage, and they emerge as a queen. But unlike the worker bee larvae, which are fed royal jelly for only a few days, the future queen bee larvae continues to be fed royal jelly exclusively throughout its entire larva development. And once the larva has completed its growth period and it's ready to pupate, the worker bee seal the queen cell with a beeswax. The fully developed queen bee emerges larger, she's more robust than worker bees. The presence of having a queen bee inhibits the development of other potential queen bees within the colony. So if the existing queen dies or becomes inadequate, the worker bees will select young larvae and feed them royal jelly to raise a new queen. So adaptable, I love bees. But these bees and the products they make all play such vital roles in the hive ecosystem and they've been utilized by humans for thousands of years for the many health benefits the bees provide to us. Ancient civilizations like Egyptians and Greeks and Romans utilized bees dating all the way back to 6000 BCE. So naturally, I felt lucky that after the bee tour, I was invited back to Linda's bee farm shop to taste some of the honey and see all of the amazing products that they make from their bees. And boy, let me tell you I had a good time. Oh. Hi, how are you? We're here with Farmer Seth's wife, Adrienne. Hello, everyone. <laughs> now the bee pollen is known as a superfood. It's gonna detox your liver. This oh, right here is our this is honeycomb. The good stuff. Hot pepper honey. <laughs> My husband, the beekeeper, he uses habanero peppers. Ooh. Oh, the hot pepper honey is excellent on pizza. All the honey has wildflower in it. That's the flower oh, that, that he the bees get the right. pollen from? Yes. So you can sample all of them. Let's do them all. So we'll start with yeah, you blueberry. It's okay. Mm, I'm gonna love all of these. I'm gonna <laughs> clean your shop out. <laughs> Lavender. This one I'm most excited for because lavender is one of my favorites. That is incredible. Oh my god, that's amazing. Ginger. Wow. wow. Very subtle ginger taste. The hot pepper honey. Finding the ginger is spicy. <laughs> the hot pepper one is gonna be insane. Whoa. Uh-oh. It sneaks up on you at the end. The mint. I like the mint and tea. Whoa. I don't think I've ever tasted anything like that before. A rosemary. The benefits of rosemary plant are insane for so many parts of your body. It helps your hair grow. Ooh, that's nice. That's really good. Buckwheat. Ooh, buckwheat. I love buckwheat. You see how dark it is? We like that. Oh, yeah. Mmm. That's number two. And lastly, we have cinnamon. We like some cinnamon. Really nice. This would be good on a baked apple. Just this is like the real wildflower pollinated mm -hmm. honey. <laughs> so good. Should I rate them all? <laughs> I know exactly the order. These are all insane to me. You should bring that over to Canada. I have to tell my husband we come into town. As you can tell, I'm clearly in my happy place. Give 
from me and my husband to you. Oh, wow. So, All of this is for me? Yeah. No way. Thank you. That's so kind of you. It might have been the happiest I've ever been. I don't really know. But listen, next time you enjoy a spoonful of honey, remember to thank our little buzzing friends for all of their hard work and the beekeepers who help make it happen for us. And just remember that on this channel, usually we take the seeds from inside exotic fruits and turn them into full blown houseplants that fruit. But this week, we journeyed down to Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Ohio raw! <laughs> where we were welcomed into Linda's bee farm with open arms, had such an amazing time and learned about how honey really travels from the hive straight to our tables at home. Thank you so much for watching my channel this week. It really is true that honey really is nature's sweetest gift. And the best gift that you could give me this week would be if you didn't forget to like, comment, follow, subscribe. Always remember that I love you. I hope you had fun with me this week and I'll see you next week where we go on another awesome journey. Love you guys so much. Incredible. Wow. Whoa. Mm. Very subtle ginger taste. Whoa. Uh-oh. Oh my god. Okay, ready to go. <laughs> That's it.